This is Jared Stoll. You're listening to Missing Curfew. Fella, my man, Fella Fridays, continue. Look at this shirt. I love this. Smitty, I didn't. We didn't design this one. This, Smitty designed this one, and I said, "Go ahead." But it's a guy with a keg of beer, an eye patch, and you got to think he's got a pack of smoke somewhere on him. He's got a pack of darts. It looks like he's no, riding he a going? bicycle slash like motorcycle. Scooter. It's a scooter. He's, he's got, got a, the eye patch. He's got a, he's got a mullet. <laughs> the eye patch is a nice touch. No sp- no sh- uh, spokes in the in the tires. No, I, I guarantee his gas tank's on empty. So is that just hey. the t-shirt? Is that a one-on-one? Or yeah, they just... Yeah. No, you can get them at uh, Sauce Hockey. Oh, perfect. Miss a curfew collections. There you go. Yeah. Hey, um, where's your bike? My bike's in my garage. Bike. Still? The Harley? 2002 V-Rod, fella. Where? 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 <laughs> where, where? It's uh, it's sitting right next to the wine fridge. Uh, it's next to the 12 cases of more wine I need to put in a different fridge. Don't have one yet. Do you ever, do you ever just... Smart? Uh, my battery's dead. Battery. The battery's dead. I got a new battery. It's sitting beside it. Um, listen, my trickle charger. It took a it took a nosedive on me a little while back. And what, what, uh, what's a trickle charger? Hey, what's a trickle charger back there, boys? Is that like three? It charges three things at once. Or? No, it's you. You plug it in, and it just gives it the right amount of charge every time it needs to, just to keep it alive. It's not like a one time boom, you know, where you gotta. Okay, so it's just like it just keeps it, it just keeps it like on a steady little buzz, you know. Would you take that out if it was charged up right now? Or I would actually. You got me fired up. Yeah, I saw that T-shirt. I'm like, I miss my bike. I remember you used to fucking pull up to my pad. Yeah, it's a sick bike. Yeah. Listen, I talked about this guy um, last couple episodes. This guy Steve Daly from Milwaukee, but he took us that Packer game, and uh, yeah. he had this bike. Straight cash, homie. He had this bike. He had this V Rod. It was the first year they ever made him. Okay, in 2002, and um, the next year, 03, was the. 50th anniversary of, of Harley Davidson. So they actually made like a, a 50th anniversary bike for it. Yeah. But um, he bought this chopper shortly thereafter, like a sick chopper. Back in 2002, like the OC chopper shows was going on. I remember that. I love that sick. show, dude. So he had like a badass one. He might have spent 150K on it. Like he's sick. And then I'm like, what are you doing with that other bike? And he, he loved it. But I managed to have him sell it to me. You, you, you talked. I, I you talked, talked him down. down. I, he's surprised. like, "Yeah, I got no room for this," you know. And, and I'm like, "I'll take it off your hands." So I think I bought it off him for about twelve five. Uh, nice right. bike, like, really nice bike. Nice bike. Still have it. Um, you know, I got both three thousand miles on it. Is that, but I've had lot, this. Right? So I've had this motorcycle. And picture this: I've had it in. I bought it in Milwaukee. I brought it to Nashville. Nashville to Philly. Philly to, to uh, Phoenix. Now we're okay. talking. But now listen, those those four places I just said, no buckets. So I used to run. Just, no I just, so you answered my question. So you know, Bucky wow, and all nice. those. That's national. Then I brought it to St. Louis. Um, and then yeah, St. Louis, I then had it in, uh, you know, in Cali now the last uh, eight years. Must have been nice in the desert to fucking. Oh, it was good. I told you, I joined a biker gang when one year. When I got hurt, me and uh, looking for biker chicks, me and Aaron Downey. For? No, me and Aaron Downey. So I told you, Aaron Downey was a uh, you know Stanley Cup champ, crazy motherfucker. The first time oh. I ever, first time I ever seen him, he Top was. Uh, I come into training camp. He's he's on the the incline, okay, with like thirty pound dumbbells, and I come in. He's got that incline going about fifteen. And he's on the speed treadmill? walking, and he's he's doing curls and presses, curls and presses, and I'm like. Who the fuck is this coach that we just, you know, and they're like, no, oh, that's Aaron. <laughs> wow, Downey. our video coach is in good shape he's here. On a, he's on a PTO, Aaron Downey. I'm like, this guy's crazy. You're like, make sure he's on my line. <laughs> hey, make sure he's on my line, boys. And uh, and then, so he didn't make our team. Um, I end up tearing my ACL. I tore my ACL, I think, in February. So come like, you know, March, April, I start to do the rehab. I'm going to Lifetime Fitness and the boys are on the road and shit because we, Glendale's so far. I was like, I'm not going out there. Do my rehab by myself. So I show up to the gym one day and he's there and he's like, what have you been up to? I'm like, ah, you know, just rehabbing. I'm like, I actually been riding my bike around. He's like, no shit. He's like, come meet me Friday. Friday. I got a, we got a bunch of guys. 11 o'clock. I show up to this, I show up to this place in North Scottsdale. There's like 85 dudes and big ass chicks. All leathered on out. All leathered out. And they're going to Cave Creek and all the way north uh, up to, uh, where'd you play golf with? Uh, Pine Canyon. They're going. Flagstaff. Flagstaff. They're doing a fucking hike. They're just a bomber ride for like six hours, stopping at all these biker bars, having a pint and a shot and going. And I'm like, I'm in. That's the open road. Baby. I'm in. So just no buckets, the no buckets. Road. Just ha. Oh, that's so sick. good. And Sarah just flowing. I always saw when I retired, I'd get a big Harley, but I mean, 
That's no chance. I'm getting on any of those. Not a bad place to have one. Yeah. I, Tom Doherty. Yeah. Doherty's got a little, uh, he's got a little, what's it Dugatti. called? Dugatti. Shocker? Is it called the Shocker? The Dugatti. I know, but the name of the bike, it's like, oh, you the Shocker, I think. Or I could see it there. One in the pink, two in the Yeah, yeah exactly. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, right there. Um, okay. Hey, maybe charge that, maybe charge that bike up for you, fella. Maybe charge that mm. bike up. Good for you to get on an open road, get some time, maybe by yourself. Just, I know, it's good. It's, it's like, What's like that uh, Tim Allen movie, Wild Hogs? Wild Hogs. There we go. Yeah. We're not that old, Max. Yeah, I mean, we're not that old. <laughs> yeah. we're, getting, we're, we're getting there, Max. We're getting there. But let's get right into it here, Up Dog. <clears throat> Fellow Fridays, Rumor Mill, um, something that you wanted to touch on here. Patty Kane um, starting to heat up his agent. His agent's, um, is it is it Papers? Papers, huh? Yeah. Smart. So there forever. I'm watching the game this week, me and the franchise, and it's like, oh, Papers says eight teams are talking to Patty Kane. I'm like, is it really eight? Like maybe, yeah. but maybe it's like three. I just think he's trying to stir the pot, which I respect. But well, you got to think, man. The one, the lots of good things about Patty Kane being a free agent, but one being, you know, he probably doesn't want much money. Like he can probably squeeze himself oh. into any situation. Yeah, I know and then the bonus structure really doesn't count against the cap when you're over what thirty five years old. There's something about the thirty five year. I don't I, know if he's thirty five yet. I, I hate the, fact check. I hate that. the cap. But listen. Um, what I wanted to bring up is, so, you know, I can't give away a name, but I was in Detroit. We were in Detroit at the game, and uh, it got brought to my attention that, you know, Patty Kane was was best buddies and loved playing with DeBrinket, and that Patty Kane being a Buffalo it'll kid, be 35, Detroit, it'll be 35. original six, played on original six before. He's played on two now. It'll be 35 in three days. Okay, okay so so this is this falls into his, yeah. you know, into his advantage having this, um, you know, signing bonus structure, but- uh, I just wanted to ask you, what, how, how do you think, like, you're a GM on Patty Kane. I come in, like, you got the coconut oil out on the table. Like, you got, you know, the k Like, how, how are you trying to stroke me off here to get me to come? <laughs> yeah, okay, you, how do you separate yourself? Well, you know, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's already had the razzle-dazzle in Chi-Town. Like, no one, that that building was as good as any yeah. in its day when he's winning. Oh, so, so it's I, not like, hey, oh, we're Toronto Maple Leafs or, you know, we're the New York Rangers. Like, he's seen it all. Yeah. So now how do you... Bring Patty Kane to be like, I'll come play for a million bucks. Yeah. I think it has to do with climate, state See, tax. There we go. And this is where I'm going. And like, you know, you had, we had Chucky out at the start of the year and, and you, you know, being the good journalist slash media guy you are now, you asked then and, and Chucky said, I'll give him my house and whatever he needs. <laughs> yeah. To me, listen, we've talked about Florida. They're, they're, they're starting to roll. Listen, Bennett's back. Monty kid's coming back here soon. I don't know what's going on with your boy, Aki. But when I look at their team right now, right, you go Rodriguez, Barkoff, Reinhardt, Verhage, Bennett, Kachuk, um, Listerine, and Lundell, Nick Cousins. I love Nick Cousins, but Nick Cousins can play on your fourth line. Yeah. Maybe you throw Patty Keane in there to start, right? These two young, I believe it's a, a Finn and a Swede. Yeah. They compete, they check, they hunt pucks. Could be a dream for Patty Keane to play with these kids. Yeah. They'll get him the biscuit. And then, mm -hmm. Patty, you do your thing. Uh, so to me, I'm a little biased because I love Matty Kachuk, but. American-born player, Patty King was probably his favorite player. That, to me, is the fit. Got the goalie. Yeah. Got the climate. Yeah. Got the golf course. State tax. State tax. You know, and then Shelly said, and I think you said this too, about, about Detroit might be a good fit for him too, right? Original yeah. six teams. Yeah. Uh, a lot of history there. They probably, then you get to Brinkett and Kane coming back together. They need to They need to really show that they're going to be in the mix though. Yeah. He's not going to go to a middle tier totally. team. Nor, nor should he. He doesn't deserve that at this part, yeah. part of his career. Let me ask you this. What about what about our boy John Cooper in the Tampa? I game? would have I mean, again, is Vasilevsky gonna be come back be healthy? He's out there skating. Yeah. So is he healthy? Yeah. Is uh I, I, I would personally love, love, love to see point, Kucherov, Stammer, Kane, Headman on a PP unit. Yeah, I nice mean, dude. come on. So you could go the right now, right now, Coop Dog has got him going Hagel, Point, Kucherov. Stammer, Sorelli, Nick Paul. So you bump Nick Paul down to the third line center, and let's just say you go Stammer, Sorelli, Kane, just to start off. I mean, that's a legit line. Sorelli hunts pucks. Kane, imagine. I love that. I love that you're resorting to the guys that hunt pucks for Patty Kane. Because, like, yeah. he's not a guy that's going to go hunt pucks anymore. Exactly. Or should he? No. He's already done that. I wouldn't be hunting pucks unless no. Patty Kane either. I love it. But, like, then you got Stammer. So you got Kaner ripping backhand sauce to Stammer one time in it. More of a veteran team. Um, we all know how good of a guy John Cooper is. Paul Maurice is. I, I, I do believe it's between those two guys. And for these people saying Toronto Maple Leafs, knock it off. He's not coming to Canada. 
He doesn't want to deal with that media. He doesn't want to play with those guys, guaranteed. Right? I mean, he'd love to play with Matthews and Marner. Sorry. But I just don't think... You think Toronto has a chance at him? Uh, I don't... I'm going to be... I'll throw it out. I think they do. Yeah. I think they do have a chance. Um, solely because Austin Matthews is arguably the top two American-born player right now. Um, you know, him, Hughes, you call him Matty Kachuk, you call Quinn Hughes. Anyway, as far as forwards and dynamic players right now, he's... He's top two. Yeah, you're right. Would, would would Patty Kane like that opportunity? Again, he's got to come in. But you can't just like fire, oh, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the crowd and the original 16. That, that's not, it doesn't fancy him anymore. He's just like, I want to win. Unless you're going to give me like a Lamborghini and a you know a membership at the nicest well, golf course. They, they could give him the Lamborghini SUV in Toronto. You can muck around Toronto that nice Lambo SUV. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's not playing golf at uh, Adios so no. with I, Chucky. It's a good point by you. Like you, you go Matthews, Marner, Kane, right? Then you bump Nyes down with Tavares and Nylander, and you put Matty Nyes on the probably the third line with Domi and Yarncrook. I mean, that makes the Leafs a lot better. And for an opportunity for arguably the best American-born player to play with an up and you know now the most dominant American-born player, I'm sure that's intriguing to him. Totally. But a million bucks in Ontario doesn't go like I'm not that Patty Kane needs the Shazich, but still, I, I don't think he's. But personally, if he wants to go to a winning team and have a chance to like let this winning team do moves at the deadline, and do, he's can't can't take any money. He's going to get the bonus structure money. <laughs> uh, hey, Keener, all you get is your per diem. Yeah, come on in. Right? Like when Doug Armstrong was like, "Upshaw, we're giving you seven fifty. I'm like, "Okay." You were thrilled. I'm like, "Do I need an agent for this?" You know. He said, okay, so this is a one time offer, right? He said my MX bills are twenty five thousand, <laughs> and then I get those. Okay, so that carry the three. Okay, so yeah, all right, this will work out. I'm like, okay, uh, Got the Sprinter van, the house, my big canyon bills, <laughs> and uh, you know. So yeah, hard, you got yourself a deal, buddy. I'll, I'll block some shots. For that. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me see the schedule. Oh, three days off in LA. Yeah, New York for Fort Army. Nice place. <laughs> it's good to be back. Good to be back. But um, yeah, listen, I, I, I'm excited to see what happens. If you're Patty Keen. Are you like we got Thanksgiving next week and then we got the holidays? Do, do you wait for the new year? Do you get you enjoy some family time? You're a family guy now. Do you enjoy some family time? Keep staying in shape and then after the ball drops, you say, okay, Pat, let's get serious here. I would say by December first, you're going to see um, something you're, done. You'll be back. I, th- I think by December first, you know he'll he'll be asked to push himself to the test, like see where see where he's at. Mm-hmm. You know, consider that 25 games in. You don't want to risk 50 games because then play, you're playing catch-up. Yeah, that's true. That happened to Matt's when he came to us in Vancouver. You know what I mean? Like, in January. That's a good point. You get 70 games. That's not 70, point. but you get you get that 55 game. You don't want to, like, come January. What if he comes back and, like, tweaks his groin first? Yeah. Then then you're like, okay, now we got to get you back for the last 20. It's just, yeah. I, I think ideally, like, start of December, pick his team, get a, get a like, just in time for the holiday. Get the rookie party Just on. Just in time for the Christmas party. Hey, boys, where's the Christmas party? Yeah, totally. Hey, where are we having it? <laughs> yeah, if you guys want me to throw it, I'm sure I can, you know, rent out a... Yeah. Speaking of parties, you see Carlson after they won. By the way, we forgot to do it, but they give out the Jolfa, the old school Gretzky Jolfa bucket for playing the game of Pit. Pit. It's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Reminds me of Phil Bork, that beauty. Um, he's like, Tim, Tim, dinner on me in Columbus, he said. It's a good city to have a team meal. Yeah, a good steakhouse. There. Yeah. The one, uh, the red, red door or something. You'd rather, as much, even if you have as much money as Carlson, you'd rather do it there than New York or LA or like Hollywood, right? Because you're going to get dinged, right? Yeah. I took plus. the big fall to Katsuya the other night. They dinged me three hundo. Yeah, but you know what it's like when you go to New York. It's a fucking scramble fest for getting everyone in the same restaurant. It was a different kind of a fest to the scramble yeah. fest. Yeah. <laughs> It, it was a fest on the long. It was a fest on the last. <laughs> no, but like, no, I, New York's a place know. you go smaller groups. You say, yeah. boys, I'll see you at the rink. Yeah, like, yeah, you take your four best buddies and yeah, and you go. Where are you, where are you going? I'm going to meet Mac L. Yeah, see you boys. What time, wants to come? What time's practice? Tomorrow? Who deserves to come? Yeah, that's a better point. So, rumor mill, baby. Up dog, I love it. As much as I love John Cooper and the Lightning, I would like to see Patty Kane down there in South Florida with my boy yeah, Chuck. I, agree. I, think, I think it'd be a good fit. Yeah. So, up his world. Party time. Excellent. I took the rings for Uppy's World because this kid reminded me of my fucking boy, Scotty Upshaw, who had the best sellies in the National League. I feel like I talk about this kid every day. I'm going to continue talking about him, too. I don't care if people are sick of hearing about him. Ross Colton, not only does he play the game the right way, he went in the other night, boom, took the puck last night, low blocker, old faithful, posted in, goes crashing the boards, up dog style, and just starts going buck diddy. So uh, he celebrates like you did, my man. And I love that because it, it, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? Infectious to the other team or trickles down to everyone else. 
So Ross Cole, up and yeah. down, baby. I mean, he well, loves well, You know what? Down the stretch, you know why I celebrated so hard? Because you didn't get many. You just don't know when it's going to be your last one. You yeah. legit don't know. I, I don't care who you are. You know, in the NHL, it's a special thing to be able to score goals. At any time, that can change. You know, you show up to the rink, they take your jersey. You know, you're on the fourth line, then they you're not the on jersey. the team anymore. Uh, this is, you know, it's a beautiful thing. I love energy. I love when a guy who is counted upon for, you know, physical play, being a good team guy. I love when he goes out and gets a goal and shows the boys it's, yeah, this is what's up. Well, you got to do it 138 times in your career. Yeah, I know, but I also oh, played for 15 of, damn years. That's a lot of goals. Yeah, you did play for 15 years. I How mean, about the guy on, on Sportsnet cut me legs out since nine <laughs> years? I'm like, dude, I played 10, 10 years in the league, but Yeah. Those those 10 games for... should have got... You should have no, got... but those 10 games for Florida count, or eight games whenever I play... That's a year. That's, a year. I'm yeah, taking that year. Totally. You're that's in 10. the show. You got a rookie I'm, party. There are two rookie parties. Yeah. No, I had a rookie party, a trip through Toronto, and a trip through Montreal, baby, and Bam. Yeah, that's a good... That's a full season right there. I was a hockey god saying, oh, but you know what? You never, you never know what's your last one. They're never going to put you in the ring of honor. They're never going <laughs> to talk about you, but here's your last little hurrah through the old, uh, right through the great country of Canada where you can get tap ins left, right, center. Uh, yeah. It was great. So, uh, Ross Cold, keep it up, man. I love that guy. Keep celebrating. Like Uppy said, it's it's an honor and privilege to play in that league. Let's go Draft Kings bets, baby. Draft Ooh. Kings, baby. I'll tell you the team you want to stay away from here, and it's the Philadelphia Flyers and John Tortorella, man. Plus right. 220 last night. Dude, right now, I know. I know. It's going to go right into my milk cart. Um, listen, the, the the structure that Torts has these guys playing with, the compete, say what you want about John Tortorella, man. This guy is a legit NHL coach. I wish they had a little more talent. Yeah. But, dude, you don't want to – these guys, take a, take a puck line, get in the goal in half. They're, they're in every game. They compete. Good for you, Torts. You got these boys going. And for the Philadelphia Flans, which I know mean a lot to you, Ups, this team's coming, man, and yep. they're going to have some cap space in the next year or two. Sean Couture's back. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Konecki's playing well. Uh, goal, uh, Carter Hart's back on where he's making saves. Yeah. Um, you know, and you, you talk about Couturier. It's when you get your leader back, when you get your guy back, and you've seen how much work he's put in to get back in that lineup, it's infectious, fella. Sure. And, uh, you know, it's nice to see them back. I love I love listening to, to the Philadelphia Flyers, you know, the games get called on the TV. It's it's pretty special. It's good when yeah. that team's buzzing. And they got the, they're got wearing, like, the old school Flyers. Yeah. This year, they're so sick, yeah. in my opinion. But, yeah, Cam Atkinson, another kid, friend of the ball. Tippett's playing, playing well. Owen Tippett's yeah. playing well. Scott Lawton's a guy who competes. And then say what you want about this new NHL, you know, soft. They play They hard. go out and get Nick Delorier last year, and then they bring in Garrett Hathaway this year. That's a fourth line that can skate, can forecheck, can, and if you want to ask Dylan Cousins, you know, his nose is crooked after they played against him. Yeah. Totally. There's still room for that in this game, man. I know. I, you know who else I love? Game. I love Farabee. Yeah. Farabee is, plays the game. Man, does he play the game the right way. Wearing a Flyers jersey and tough and great with the puck. He's patient. He makes plays. He's got a great shot. Um, you know, he's a guy like, he, and he can play against top players. Big time. This is so efficient. And I love Nick Sealer on the back end. Old 24 there. He'll fight you. He'll do whatever he wants. He's a great throwback defenseman. Um, he'll seal the wall. I think Sealer. Yeah, I think Stahl's out for a while. I don't know if it's the whole year, but he's out for a while. But, I mean, listen, if you're Jonesy and Daniel Briere, and then they're playing on his way, good on you boys. So, hey, listen, tread carefully with the Philadelphia Flyers. Get on the other side of them here. I don't want to cool them off, but they're they're playing well. So, right into my milk carton up, dog. You, bet, you bumped into Gretz. And uh, in Toronto, when we were up there on the fellow tour, and he said he wasn't sure about the Carolina Hurricanes, and it's a team that I loved. I thought with going to the conference finals last year, and and you know having some tough losses, that they're going to come off to a great start. Well, they've been costing me some money. They're sitting nine seven and zero right now, third in the Metro Division. So Rod the Bod and the boys, I'm putting you on the milk curtain because I want a little milk curtain bump here, up dog. But for me, just the consistency of them right now scares me a little bit. Um, I, I do think they'll get through it, Uppy, but. I, I wouldn't have them sitting here. I, I thought they'd be sitting where the Rangers are, 11-2 with the yeah. start they had. So, boys, Milk Carton, you're costing me money. Let's go. Yeah, those was big decisions they made this year. Signing Jordan Stahl, Sebastian Ajo, um, you know, Freddie Anderson. Unfortunately, him being hurt. Oh. Terrible, terrible uh, injuries dealing with. Um, these guys, it was it was kind of cats out of the bag when, when Gretz was kind of like, listen, I'll, I'll give you something, but 
Uh, there's a love coach Brady. I know in the league that says they don't ever change the way they play. I would love to play them in the first round. I would love to play Carolina in playoffs because they don't adjust to what we do. Oh, that's so important. And it is in playoff in a, in a playoffs. That's there. all that playoffs is. Is like, hey, okay, you change. got us tonight. Well, here, I'm going to put this line together. Go deal with them tomorrow. Totally. Or, oh, yeah, you guys, your D just come down the walls the whole time. Okay, we're going to hit the low and slow center, and we're out and bump. How are you? We got to make a T-shirt low and slow. I'm not a stack stud. But listen, like, you look at their back end, and, like, there's rumors going to trade Tony D'Angelo. Like, I, I think he's a good player, but, like, you go Slavin, Burns, um, Brady Shea, Pesci, Orloff, D'Angelo. Like, that is as good as it gets, man. And then up front, I... They, uh, they probably need another scorer, but like depth, Bunting's come in there, a guy I'd love to have my team, but I, I would hate to play. I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little concerned. That's why they're going on the card. Yeah. Yeah. Good call, bud. Yeah. Well, good call by Gretz, I think. So, yeah. Uh, get this guy a beer up, dog. You got a guy that you just said, keep, like, let's just keep the beers on ice for him. Absolutely. It's Operation Quinn Hughes again, boys. It's, uh, <laughs> listen, keep this guy's beers cold. The Labatt Blue Lights. Uh, what he's doing, Obi, is is special. What a goal last night in overtime. Miller, epic pass. What a comeback. I had the Canucks puck line. Well, um, pu- money no, line or no, puck no, line? No, money line. Yeah. Money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a money line. It was a, st- oh my God. It, we'll get into the next one. I, I was driving. Uh, what a goal. What a, I was driving home and we did the franchise and I had a text from Upshaw. I go, that text there has something to do with some kind of game that's going on right now. And I looked at her like, you got the Canucks and I looked at the score. I'm teasing <laughs> Then I got home. Oh, I'm like, what a what a comeback! I baby. know you know who uh, you know who messed up at center ice. Was it Bo? It was Bo Horvat in overtime, three on three. He let his guy go, and that guy was no one but Operation Quinn Hughes. And he went in, and what up? He did the Bedard pull. He did the pull shot to his inside foot, and just went spanky over the glove. Spanky, spanky. Listen, I want to, you know, while we're giving out blue lights, let's give out 18,000 to the fans that were there yeah. because that baby, she's starting to rock again. I and know, I'll be, I'll be honest let's with get you, up brother, there. as an ex Canuck, when that place, that place used to go off. I'm, uh, it's great to see. Stay with it, boys. And I don't know if we're talking to a beer guy or a wine guy, but somebody make sure his wine fridge is full or his blue lights are on ice too because yeah. Tox has come in there and been exactly what as advertised. Yeah, you know what? I, I want to throw this out there. Mike Yo. I had him in, yo. I had him, yo, Z, yo, yo. Um, he's, you know, he's involved. I see talk in his ear all the time. You got a lot uh, of coaches on that bench. I know, he's just, listen, he's a smart guy. He's probably running their PK, so I'm not going to give any credit to the PP. That's probably Gonch and. I would hope that's that, That's Gonch and talks. Probably. Not but whatever, y- Yossi's, y- he's a great coach. He's X's and O's. He's, you know, he, he had a, the right way about him. Um. He's, you know, he's a big reason why those guys with that core group of coaches um, are helping this team, you know, be have the star. What did you say? Best start? Best start in franchise history. See? We stung a bit. I guess we didn't get off to great starts, but yeah, it's okay. That's how you finish. But. Yeah, that's true. We didn't finish. Well, we did it right, but yeah. Oh, and a funny story about Yozy is uh, when we first started to do this podcast, mm-hmm. I reached out to him. He had just taken the yeah. job in... Uh, so he left St. Louis, and if you can remind me where he went. Did he go to Philly? No. He went to Philly. Oh, he went to Mini. No, he was in Mini first. He went to Philly. Philly. Okay, and I, I sent him like a text. I said, you know, good luck over in Philly. And he wrote me back, good, how you doing? I, I saw you retired. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, what are you doing now? I'm like, I started a podcast with my boy Obi. He's like, no shit, what are you calling? I go, missing curfew. And he just wrote back, LOL, LOL. He's like, what a perfect name. Yeah. Dallas yeah, Akers, too. When Dallas Akers, old Dally Wacker heard the name, he's like, God, that's a great name, especially for you two guys. Yeah. That was all you. I go, up, dog, we're ready to rock. We got the we got the art. We got the trailer. We need a name. I'm coming up with a blank. You're like, fuck, missing curfew. But I'm like, <laughs> boom, that's it. Done. Let's go. So, uh, Canucks, keep it rolling. Uh, me and the up, dog, we will be up there in the new year. We're just waiting for that rain to let off, eh? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dry it up. Uh, shout out. Get this guy a beer. Uh, your favorite buddy, uh, Radis Gudis. Um, I'm going to pump my own horns here, right? It's our podcast. As you should. First Ducks defenseman. Me and the franchise are sitting on the couch just cooked. And I go, <laughs> did you hear that franchise? First NHL defenseman should Shane O'Brien have a Gordial hat trick? And Gudis' response goes, well, that's something. <laughs> well, that's something. Um, man, he's been great. He's been great. Um, uh, better than I expected him. And, and Lubushkin, you get two veteran defensemen. Um, they got some mojo going there. Killer back up front looks good. So, 
I know he played your hard up dog, but I'm gonna give sure, this, I'm gonna give no, he's a like, great pickup, man. Yeah. I mean, look at how many teams would love to have that guy. Like, do you think the Toronto Maple Leafs wouldn't like to have that guy? Oh my god. He'd be perfect in Toronto. They would love him. A lot of good good teams missing that right handed strong D man. So he's I mean, he's a great pickup and I yeah. thought he was done back when he played in Philly. Oh, yeah. He's getting better. He had one playoffs where I was like, if this guy turns one more <laughs> puck over, he's done. He's like Luke Shed. They're I getting know, better. Yeah, I know. He's just he's found like listen, I know what it's all about. When you find your game, Taylor made find your game. Yeah. Uh Taylor made find your nugget. <laughs> uh, find your ball. When you get there, man, it's uh you know, and and you're just in your your zone, your flow state. You're playing great hockey. It, it can happen later in life. So yeah. ever give up, kids. Stay with it. Don't <laughs> let them take the jersey off your back like you did to be in the up dog. And last but not least, not another not really a not really a fan favorite here of being the up dogs either. But hey, we got we're honest. We're we're honest when they're good. We're honest when you're bad. Evander Kane, get this guy a blue light. Had a hat trick last night. I know what it's like to hate a coach. I hated Bob Hartley, and I don't talk to Vander Kane. He hates me probably. But I guarantee he hated Jay Woodcroft too because the way he's played since Jay's got piped and the way he played before Jay left, like you said to me one night when we were smoking those nice sogies, he's like, this guy's checked out. Yeah. And now he's playing like a man possessed. So Evander Kane, good on you, buddy. Yeah. Keep her going. Connor and the boys need you. Get him a blue light. But I think he was happy to see Jay Woodcroft go. I'd say so. And what a comeback. You talk about comebacks. That was another one where Seattle cracked and just had just smothered and you come back in the third and and that's uh that was party time at Edmonton last night. Yeah, no, the the, the crack and smother you. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They smother your bets. They the smother crack it. And they just put their tentacles around your neck and just squeeze. I uh, I actually said that this week that I hate the crack and I'm like I've been thinking about it, like I I don't hate the crack and that's just, I I like listen I'm an Avs guy, the crack and have cost me some money, but I respect everything they the way they play. Yeah, like they're they're everything that's right. Like they buzz, but I mean they, listen they'd suck me into some penalties. I'd be cross checking everyone totally. But uh, are we doing top titty? Yeah, get those guys a beer. We're going right into top titty. Top titty. Top titty Saturday night. It's back. Listen, I'm going to sweeten the pot for the fellas out here because we want to sell this thing out. Oppie finished third place this year. Uh, that last third place in our first week, by the way. Yeah, I'm surprised you got your team. Oh, I got a hundred. Hey, I actually got his team in. Yeah. Wow. It's because it's on Saturdays now. It's not Fridays. Fridays was Friday golf. We're going to go through your team right now. But listen, first place on Saturday night, top titty. You come in first. You win 200 bucks from our good friends at DraftKings. And not only that, the updog and myself will send you a missing curfew hat and a missing curfew t-shirt. So you win. You send your address to Maxi at missingcurfew.com. I will make sure personally that you get a crispy hat and one of these buttery tees. Saturday night, top titty, updog. What was your squad last week? My squad, listen, I had the Edmonton Oilers playing the San Jose Sharks in the toilet bowl, and I loaded up on the Oilers. So listen, I went, I'll just name my Oilers. McDavid, Dreisaitl, Fogel, and Nurse, okay? I had McDavid. I got all those. Jeez. McDavid, it was all right. Dreisaitl got me, he was he was cruising. Nurse got me 15 points, so well done. But I'll tell you who laid the leads for me. This guy, I had Nick Paul. He was ice cold. He had zero. Lawson Krauss got me 12 points. Primo, the goalie, surprising. Primo from Detroit got me 17 points. Keith okay. Primo? But, uh, the fuck's Primo? Coyle in Boston, 51 points. How are you? Hat trick from your one out. Hat trick, one apple, seven shots on net, three block shots. This guy fucks. That is that is fifty one <laughs> points. I don't know how you get. Is that even? That's like in fantasy football, your guy going off for fifty. Yeah, that's like Tyree Kill. Yeah, having a day. That's like three touchdowns. Three touchdowns. Yeah, Patrick. Well yeah. done, Charlie Coyle. Well done. I should have got you a beer. You get a Labatt beer. I had McDavid seven points. Is not going to cut it. My boy Brady Kachuk threw a goose egg up there for me. Corey Perry thirteen points, and then Sean Sean Gossesburg, zeros. Shane Gus, whatever his name is. Yeah. Like your zeros. I don't know. Shane, Sean, who gives a shit? Hey. <laughs> this week, we got 13. <laughs> ga- we, got- <laughs> we got 13 games up, dog. Saturday night, top titty. We're not giving out our secrets anymore. You got to do your own digging. But listen, Avs, Stars is a game I'm going to be keeping my eye on when I'm in Vegas. Uh, your Blues are in LA. Kraken, Canucks. By the way, I want to see that cracking Canucks. Just let's get a rivalry going. Totally, like like some great rivalry. Now. Somebody spear somebody. What do you I call think. that? The the like cross check rivalry of the the, the Northwest. No, no, no. I call it like the the harbor 
like the yeah, so, yeah, something yeah. to do with the Vancouver the Stinky Harbor, Harbor the Classic. Stinky Harbor Classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time they played. Yeah. It's the Admiral City against the what's I don't even know what the Vancouver. I don't called. know the rainy city. No, tap in, tap in city. Tap the umbrella. In. Maybe it's the uh, Battle of the. Well, Eagles. I know what they. I know what they call Vancouver. I can't say it on this podcast because of for very different reasons. But Rangers, Devils, Battle of the Hudson, thirteen games. Saturday night, top titty. The up dog finished third. Let's bring him down a peg or two, boys. First place gets a hat and a buttery t-shirt. DraftKings, baby. Saturday night, lock of the week. Listen up, dog. We're both one and two. Mm -hmm. We took it on the chin. Your blues laid it to my... Me and the franchise were watching. Just laid it to my avalanche. Um, So listen, I'm going to let you go again. I'm going to let you go again. All right, fella. And I, I think I know who you're going to take, but go. Do you? I think I do. Well, I'm going to take the Boston Bruins over the Montreal Canadiens. How's that? That's a lock of the week. Lock of the night. It is. Isn't it? That's a lock. Come on. That's a minus 320 lock there. Man. I would say so. Oh, the I'm Bruins, 12-1-2. I mean, come on. What a start. Montgomery's got the boys fired up again. Let's go, Charlie Coyle. Go off for another 50 points for the up dog. Yeah, okay, listen, I'm torn between two games here. I'm torn between Carolina at home against Sid and the boys or the L.A. Kings against the St. Louis Blues. I'm just scared about the Blues. Like, you get fired up to play in L.A., right? Like, you you know you're going to go out after the game. That's a team that, I don't know. I'm going to go with the Carolina Hurricanes at home against Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, Up Dog's got the Boston Bruins against Marty St. Louis Habs. What do you think that line's going to be? Ooh. Minus two ninety five. Yeah, two ninety five. That's okay. I, I'm such a anything under three hundred now. I'm like, ah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll touch that. I'll touch that. So, uh, Boston Bruins, Carolina Hurricanes, Saturday Night Lock of the Week, the milk carton, and the lock of the week in the same episode. That yeah. might be a uh, missing trophy first there. That might be. That might be. Man, I, I hope I, I hope my milk cart. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> Just call them out and just be like, come on, boys, I need you. It's a lot. That's, that's how I coach, eh? Listen, I motivate. I motivate. I I, I beat you down and I bring you back up. I'm, I bring it's you totally, back up. I, I couldn't agree more. We got a couple minutes here. Um, what do you got? Just I got a big weekend, man. I got a pump. I, listen, I'm going to Vegas with my boy. Oh, Billy my Quinn. God, my boy, Andy Mack. Mac um, Daddy's going to Vegas? You know what? Shout out to my boy, Milan Lucic. I, I, I'm pretty sure he's got me a meet and greet with Bill Burr after the show. Which wow. Bill Burr's, he's my idol, man. I love that guy. Is that tomorrow night? Yeah. If you don't listen to Bill Burr, do yourself a favor. Listen to his Monday morning podcast. If you're ever just down or well, this guy is hilarious. Uh, UFC fights at the Apex and then F1. Um, but you got yourself a big weekend. Action pack. Yeah, action pack. Yeah, listen, I am actually going to Scottsdale tomorrow morning and uh, playing in the Coyotes alumni golf tournament. But I'm not going as a Coyote alumni, which I am. I didn't even get invited. <laughs> our boy Sheldon Walitsky, who is throwing our Aspen NHL Winter Classic up there, is uh, he bought a foursome. So it's me, Kyle Quincy, and our big big guy PJ McKay, and we're going in. That's a we lot. got that's a lot of beef in one group. Yeah, there. we got uh, we got Friday, Saturday, and Monday for no Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. But we're not playing Monday. We're gonna just kibosh that. Um, but then I think I'm playing Bel Air Monday with uh, a couple of the Blues guys. Oh, nice. Bel Air's open on Mondays? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, cool. Bel Air's, uh, I think for Thanksgiving week. On a Monday? I think on a Monday. Oh, wow. That's good. I I think they should maybe close, open up. close it for three Mondays a month. Do you need every yeah. Monday? Like, I, I wouldn't mind playing Mondays. Totally. As a single guy with, you know, nothing to do, I wouldn't mind playing Mondays. I agree. But I'm up to here with Big Canyon. Yeah, I'm up to here with Big Canyon. I mean, Thanksgiving next weekend. Yeah, you, yeah, every turkey. time I call Big Canyon, there's something going on. Tournament, Ladies' Day, Guest Day. It's like now that you're a member, now that you're full member, everything's just bloated. Listen, yeah. I'm gonna, I told Franchise, I'm going to end up getting kicked out. I'm like right here to just saying something that's going to get me red flag. So we talked about this, and we, we want to get on some uh, some panels, right? Or some... What do you call that? We want to get on some uh, committees. Committees. Yeah. Some yeah, committees. Yeah. So so yeah. off the top, we're like, I oh, got to get on the board. Oh, we step on the driving range the one day, and the guy's like, when he sees Obi with the driver, he's like, hey, no drivers out here. Obi looks at him, he's like, you think I'm just going to fucking hit this thing? Like, <laughs> through the, he's like, I know, dummy. He's like, well, what's your name? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. You tell him Shane O'Brien had the driver out here, okay? Yeah, I'm like, okay, maybe he wants to be on the driving range committee and just fire that guy. <laughs> and then, and then we're like, you I'm know, getting crusty. Up. I go, I go, hey, so I think I'm going to do Thanksgiving dinner here. I'm going to bring the family over. And, and then he's like, oh, couldn't you get a rezzo? I'm like, 
twelve thirty. I go, yeah, me neither. Actually, I'm on the waiting list. He's like, yeah, this is a joke. I'm like, get on the turkey committee then. <laughs> I'm like, okay, perfect. Turkey committee and uh, driving range. and the driving range committee. Perfect. Yeah. I'm gonna be on the wine committee. Yeah. No, you you're gonna be the you're gonna be bought yourself on the wine. Yeah, you're the yeah. CEO of wine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Listen, Comes like the free fridge. I, I call big. I call Big Canyon. Um, they're like, yeah, we can get you a uh, turkey dinner at twelve thirty. P. I'm like, is the turkey? Is the turkey's not even cooked at twelve thirty? They put the turkey at eleven. It's Don't Super it? Wednesday oh, like, on Wednesday. You like, think I'm up at twelve thirty? Oh man, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, but uh, like, any Super Wednesday plans this year? I got a tentative reservation. Uh, well, we're going to be in here Tuesday, are we, boys? Are we yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're just, yeah. I just do got a Monday, so I could have the Thanksgiving week off. I, Apparently, <laughs> those those uh, plans got overlooked, so it looks like I'm coming in here Tuesday. I mean, I could come in here Monday. Oh, I mean, this, fuck. This is How, is it Bel Air? This is the guy you got to talk we'll, to. We'll be working it Tuesday, I guess. Are you going to... What kind of shape are you going to be in Monday? I'm going to be in really rough shape. Yeah. We'll really rough, really rough shape. Um, we'll figure it out. Yeah, Max, but I got I got 10 to plans at Rothschild's. If you, if you want to join up, dog. I got, Isn't uh, it a week off next week at All Pass here? We're Ben. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, we got to do one pod. We're everybody else. <laughs> we we do, boys, we got we got to do one eyes. Uh, does just, everyone get the full hey, week hey, off in the U.S. here? Or is that, uh, most people just Thursday, Friday. Oh, but you got a good boss here. Al, Al's a good boss. As much as I like to take the week off, boys, I mean, I'm with you, but I think we got to fire one pod, <laughs> don't we? Like, <laughs> hey, Draft Kings, uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving. We're done for two weeks. Hey, we'll be back. We'll yeah. be back. So, um, all right, up dog. We got Jared Stoll coming at you. Oh, here yeah, Stoll, Friday. So, Kings have been rolling. I uh, wanted to get Stoll on. He's the man. So enjoy this. Jared Stoll coming at you. Fellas. Fella. My oh, man. Fellow Fridays continue. Yeah, this one's one of the, you know, I'm excited for this one. Always. I love this guy. I love him. He's been a recurring guest, recurring friend on the pod. Uh, we go back way, way long. You, way, way long. You go way back with Stoll. Way right? back with Stoll. Like yeah. WHL days, right? Well, even a little bit before that. But yeah, the WHL days, yeah. Stoll was, uh, listen, I played in Kamloops. He uh, he was a Kootenai Ice captain of the Kootenai Ice when I came in Kamloops. Yeah, uh, captained them to a Memorial Cup, and then shortly thereafter, captain uh, my first World Juniors. We went over to Czech Republic, so he was our he was our go to leader, man, uh, a leader on and off the ice. Uh, anyone that knows this guy knows. You just said it earlier. I think this guy makes you happy. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's one of a kind. Uh, welcome his new little boy, his new Mac Daddy Mac Attack. Um, so congrats to him and EA on that. But listen, 41 years old, Jared Stoll, he, uh, one of the best centermen's two-way centers yeah. in the league for a long time. Played for the Oilers in 02 to 08. Uh, then on to the Kings for two Stanley Cups from 2008 to 2015. And then a little cup of coffee for the New York Rangers and the Minnesota Wild to top it off. Yeah, I wish you would have got more of a chance with the Rangers. Totally. Just because he's a New York type of guy, I know. right? Like it I just know. didn't work out there. too. But listen, I remember him obviously coming up with the Oilers. He was a great Edmonton Oilers, but you know you got to think when that phone rang and he said, "Hey, you're going to the LA Kings." Now, granted, you know they went to the Stanley Cup Finals with the Oilers. The Kings were in a full rebuild. He was probably like, Fuck, you know, and uh, traded with his boy Matt Green. Yeah, and then I remember we played we played Stoli in the first round. When I was with the with the Canucks, my my second year in Vancouver, and we ended up beating them in six. And I'll never forget we're leaving Staples and we're sitting on the on the bus and. You know, Louie and Mitchie and Juice and Cass and Burr, and we all kind of just looked around at each other and said, that team's coming, boys. Like, I remember Lou said, like, Quickie, like, that guy, he's going to be an elite goaltender. We all know what happened. And we knew that they were coming. And sure enough, boom, two cups later. Two cups How later. are you? Uh, and and we, we dive a little bit into this, but how good of a team they were back in the day, man. Then Mike Richards, Jeff Carter, you had uh, Gabrick, you had, you know, Willie Richardson, Mitchell, Green, Quick. Justin Williams, Quickie. I mean, Colpy, Dowdy, Dowdy. What a Stoli. I mean, and they like <laughs> big, big pens. If you're listening, where are you, buddy? <laughs> where are you, big pens? If you're listening, listen. I I got to spend some time with them in the off season up at the old six man where you came up, and I you know all my boy Richardson. I got no Stoli, but I was jealous with how tight of a team those Kings were. And listen, yeah. I I talked to you a lot and. You were a great teammate on the road, and to me, on my teams I played on, when I got on the road, there wasn't many guys I wanted to kind of hang out with. I wanted to go do my thing for different reasons, maybe, but with them, they were always at Stoli's house. They were always on the road together. They truly loved to be around each other. Yeah, yeah, and it, it means, we touch on this a little bit in the interview, but, um, you know, being in South Bay, being in this Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach area, easy living, bro. Easy living. Everyone wants to live down in the same little area, yeah. all the guys, their wives get to hang out. They all go to the same coffee shop. They ride together, carpool, listen to tunes. It's like, a good setup. 
Yeah, it's a really it's good, good setup. It's a great setup. I'll never forget when we had the six man volleyball team and all you guys had your girlfriends there. You had your ex girlfriend, Loops had his girlfriend. Stoli was dating, I think, Katie back in the day. I, I said, Stoli, got a couple girls coming over from the volleyball tournament. Is that all right? He said, How many homes? I said, Two, two, three. He's like, Make sure that's max. <laughs> The gate opens up, the whole squad comes in, 12 of them. Stoli looks at me like, this girl loses his mind. I'm like, sorry, Stoli, babe. Sorry, Stoli, babe. But um, doing great things now. Uppy um, does great things on, on Bally Sports, on TV, uh, and player development stuff, which we dive into him about. He, he's at the rink every day. Um, you know, it's funny you asked about how many hours they got to put in and stuff like that. It's, it's He loves it, but, I mean, he's busy. Busy, busy bro, busy. How do you like that uh, black-on-black missing curfew hat there? It's a good hat. Shout out to your boy at uh, Platform Noah. Noah inspired that hat. Yeah, Noah. Because he had the platform. The black on black, the Aspen. I like it, baby. I like this it. This is a nice twig. Nice hat. Yeah. So listen, big good expectations curve. for the Kings, which we dive into. We all know they made some huge, huge moves in the offseason. Um, they traded all the way the guys I said. I thought it was going to be for Matthews. They chose to, you know, obviously probably couldn't afford him. He didn't want to leave. We know how that played out. But huge, huge season for the Kings here. Up there. Yeah, anyone who takes a look at that lineup and then – puts the lineup on ice and realizes how they play, I think it's a great, I mean, it's a good team, but you're right. And you ask questions. How do you get by 97? How do you get by 29? I'm just trying to think, like, let's put me and you in the Kings dressing room, and, and we made all these great moves, and we come back to camp, and we're feeling good, and this is our year, and then we look at the division, and we see 97 up there in Edmonton, and 29, it's like yeah. in Vegas. It's like, I mean, anything can happen come playoff time. Well, it's just. I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's, and it's just that. You look around the room. And in that room, I think they might have more tools collectively totally. to play no matter who's out on the ice. You know, he talks about nine guys up front and four really solid big boys on the back. Those guys can all play. And if they get caught out against 97 or 29, they got a better chance than, say, if they have a third or fourth line that yeah. can't really compete with these guys. Like, yeah. I think they can, speed wise, obviously, no one can keep up with 97, but you might be able to shut them down. Yeah. Um, and they're going to get their cookies, but they just have the, touching on those nine guys. They have them, um, and we'll see if they can keep it up. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I, I love watching the Kings play. Uh, we obviously know the Ducks down here in Orange County are going through a rebuild. So, uh, Stoli Babe coming at you, fella. <laughs> Welcome back to Mystic Curfew, Up Dog, the man, the myth, the legend, one of our boys, team guy. Right up the six, 405. Six style, <laughs> snap it back, one-timers, good on the four check. Uh, Stoli, babe, Jared Stoll, always good to see you, buddy. I missed that smile. Oh, good to see you guys. Thanks for the scouting report, new. <laughs> good good chatter on the bench, can line up a dinner, doesn't mind a good appetizer yeah. or two, eh? He's good at bringing guys in, Stoli, but uh, he was looking forward to this one for sure. I, I'll, t- I'll tell you what, there's guys throughout my career that I wish I could have played for, and Stoli, babe, you're at the top of that list. For on ice activities well, and off ice, yeah, activities. Andy's a low and slow type centerman. He'd be oh, he'd be open for that pass. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd support you, bud. When you're in trouble, we'll come back. <laughs> oh, Stoli, babe, I knew you'd be right there. I just go between the legs, Stoli, babe. For hell, <laughs> hey, little change, little change, grab a water, hey, or go boy, you uh, I'm not gonna lie, I wish I played with you guys too. Let's be honest. Um, Stoli, first of all, uh, congrats on the Mac attack. Uh, this guy's a great father. He's got. Uh, Izzy and Beckham, he's busy. How, how's it being a dad? How's that changed your life? Because it's pretty cool, bud. Yeah, it's been it's been awesome. It's it's a lot of fun waking up and seeing how he is in the morning, how much he's changed overnight. They uh, like you know, I'll be they they their little face. They, they've changed so much, and especially if you're gone two or three days, you come home and yeah, you know, and now he's starting to smile and laugh and try to talk. Obviously, he's not uh, not speaking English right now. I don't know what he's speaking, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's 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 funny their little sounds that they make and. Uh, it's been a lot of fun so far. We got to get this kid to say fella for his yeah, words. Yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> hey, fella, fella. Hey, back, you kind of sound like Richie back in the day there after Hyde. What are you saying there, bud? I can't quite understand. <laughs> so how, how old pretty, is he now? Well, what, what kind of stage is this little man? And is he is he kind of just crawling uh, around? Just, is he? Uh, no, not crazy. He's just moving? three months. So okay. Oh, wow. Uh, so he's not even yeah, rolling over yet. No, not yet. Yeah. No, his, his neck's getting strong. Tummy time's doing, uh, he's doing well there. So, yeah. By the way, the enjoy this yet. stage right now because next thing you know, they're moving around. You got to like watch them or they're gone. <laughs> You're like, huh. Yeah, that's- like now you can lay them on the bed, watch the game, like, you know, flip yeah. through the stats and check check your fantasy. But when, when he starts rolling over and shit, he might fall off the bed or the couch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, how excited oh, are you? Go ahead. 
he he loves he loves watching football and hockey already. You can see the screen, and he loves loves all the movement. So it's been fun to watch that with him. Stole you had you had good style on and off the ice. How far are you up to just get Mac just dialed in with like some sick kicks and some good like you're gonna be looking forward to that. Like if I ever had a baby boy, that'd be the one other thing. I'm like, this guy's gonna look good. He's gonna have some style. Yeah, I can't wait to get him in a lot of the gear. We already got him, and uh, he's probably got about twenty pairs of Jordans already yeah. from gifts and stuff. So, yeah, it's uh, can't wait for that. You're right, Oves. I can't wait till he gets a little bit older. You take him back to Saskatchewan too. Hey, eh? eh, this is where, <laughs> this is where the old man's from here. What's, what's your hometown called, Stoli? Man, what's your hometown called? The Yorkton. <laughs> they got the best names, but um, besides the Mac attack, how was your summer, fella? Did you get off to any trips, or was it just full on uh, baby duty kind of thing? Uh, no, we go out to Montana every summer and, uh, spend, uh, about four or five weeks out there, do some golfing and fishing and hiking and stuff like that. But once, once mid August starts, uh, we, we start having camps, our young guys start coming into the town, our prospects start working with, uh, those guys, getting them ready for, for a rookie camp and then main camp. So it's, uh, yeah, once August the turn comes around, it's, we're back at it. Oh, you just teed me up. I saw a clip from the development <laughs> camp or whatever. You're talking about one time with this kid, you're like. You got to get the bottom hand a little lower and you got to just, you got to just lean right on her. Yeah. Get that bottom hand lower there. And then you showed up to the, on the bench. You're like, Hey boys, how we doing here? A little quiet here today, boys. Hey, a little quiet here today. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you got to get him talking still. It's a, it's part of the match. Oh, part of the game. It is. Yeah, and by the way, no one had his hand lower. Maybe Richie on a face-off in this this oh, guy. Stoli right. had her down by the, the yeah. heel of the twig. Just the, the tongue's out. <laughs> <down by the, laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, Stoli's cheating there. The goddamn out. art form. Stoli's <laughs> cheating. Get him out of there. Look at his right boot there. He's cheating on that. <laughs> oh, the best was just hearing hearing coaches on the bench just yelling and screaming at the lines. Like, All right, I got him. I yeah. got him. It's totally, it is nice though when you play another team and and you know we, so we play the Kings or playing the Oilers and your name's circled up there because they're like this fucking guy wins these draws you got to fucking match his effort out there you know yeah good luck it was always a Stoli's name was always circled on the board oh, yeah. yeah I had I had circled for other reasons faceoffs but uh, <laughs> the only guy that man to go harder to face off than you is Richardson I mean I'm I'm still yeah. gonna miss that guy competing out there but um, yeah. Stoli babe you know Updog talks a lot about about missing the game and. I don't miss it as much as the updog, but how nice is it being around it? Like we were just talking about your schedule before we came on air here. Like nobody loved the game more than you. Like, it, is it a nice, nice way for you to be at the rink every day? Yeah, it, it's great. Still being involved in the game. It's uh, being around the, the young players and the Kings, to be honest, we're all under the same roof of here. And El Segundo, the Ontario rain have one side, the Kings have the other side. So uh, our access as player development, our access is, is, I don't know if there's a better, better setup in the league, to be honest with you, to, to all be together like this. So guys are getting sent up, uh, you know, called up, sent down. It's uh, they're basically walk across the hallway. So um, a lot of video for us. We go through a lot of video and watch, watch a lot of their games. And uh, yeah, it's, it's fun still being involved. And most of us live down here in the South Bay. So it's a, you know, a 10 minute drive to work every day. Stoli, let me, let me bring up the fact that you guys share the same rink and that the you know, the kids who get called up, for example, when I played in Philly, uh, it just rang a bell, but when I played in Philly, the Phantoms were next door, but they played in the same rink, all that good stuff. But if you were a kid that got called up, they would kind of, you know, the, it felt like the management would use that against these kids, right? Like, oh, we could just call them up one day, send them back down the next day. Where like, if you played in Milwaukee and Nashville, you're up, you're up, right? You're not yeah. going to just go back and forth, yeah. back and forth. Yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Does, is that ever kind of came up? where it's like just so convenient to send yeah. a kid down uh maybe you know what maybe yeah when you say it that way it's uh maybe there's a little bit of that too but th there's also so much of the you know guys are getting you know called up sent down it's a lot of the paperwork stuff now right it, it happens that maybe they don't even play a game it's it's the whole salary cap situation where where it's it's basically a, a signature on a paper right a lot of that stuff's happening now so um maybe a little bit uppy but yeah. at the same time you know the guys that are practicing here with the rain like they also know how close it is, how close they are to being in the Kings locker room. So I think you can look at it both ways. That's yeah, how, that's, that's what I was way. piggybacking. I way. couldn't have felt any farther from the NHL when the Ducks had us in Portland, Maine. I'm like, fuck me. I, yeah, am, I am in the jungle here. <laughs> hey, Berkey, remember me? Bought Obes here, bud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it well, sounds just a Kings. little crispier on the other ice surface. Hey, a little more tape to tape. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> but like the minor league team uh, with the Kings here back in the day was in Manchester, New Hampshire. So that uh, was uh, basically across the country. And I never understood that. It's now teams are, are, are understanding or getting their minor league teams closer to their 
their big clubs, which I think is the right thing to do. You know what? It's a good idea too, because if you're an Ontario rated, you just see national leaguers walking around. Like back in the day, if I was coming to the American League and I saw national leaguers, I'm like, yeah. national leaguers, right? You like, oh, look, watch the practice. You could pick stuff up watching yeah. them. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. And Stoli, last year with, you know, the Coachella Valley, you know, the Thunderbirds, right, coming in, uh, talk a little bit about just how awesome it is for these guys to have their own division here and just how, you know, convenient it is to just jump on a bus and cruise up, you know, sunny time, it's, you know, postcard it's type a, stuff. It's a little better than the old Binghamton, Al yeah. Albany, Utica fucking, hey, how's that division? <laughs> but like, do you feel that these kids, do they, do they take advantage of it or do they like it? Like, is it? Does it benefit them to just have their own little division down here? Yeah, I think it does. You know, they, they're not flying that many. You know, our, our team here in Ontario, they're, they're flying to Colorado, a couple trips in Colorado, Calgary, and Abbotsford. Like, those are their main big trips where they're flying. But you think about it, there's the Anaheim Ducks are in San Diego. Um, you got Seattle's in Coachella, like you said. You got ba Bakersfield is, is Edmonton. So there's there's it's all within two hours. Yeah. And San Jose is in San Jose. They, they're flying to San Jose, but that's that's an hour flight. So um, very convenient for the guys for sure. Uh, I think it's just it's good to have a, a West Coast division. And then uh, you know once playoff starts and comes around, then you, you figure that out. You're going to be traveling uh, no matter what. So uh, yeah, no, for these guys it's good, and it's also good for these guys to 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 live here in the South Bay. And like I was talking about before with um, you know the Kings of the Rain being here, some you know, they all live together. You know they're they're bunking up two three to a to a townhouse a condo, and, and some of the Rain are living with the Kings players. You know and vice versa. It's uh, so I think when, say, these kids get called up, the comfort level is so good once they get called up, say, and, and, they, and they switch locker rooms. They're all friends. They're all buddies. They, they, they've lived together. They've hung out together already. So that's another huge plus. Yeah. That wouldn't be good back in the day. Like, if, if I was living with Loops when he was in the show and I was in the jungle, <laughs> hey, let's yeah, go. Yeah, all right, yeah. don't worry about it. Let's go, man. Let's go have a few. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we were in San Diego, old crusty Bob Murray, I was like, to Dallas Aikens, I'm like, Dally, like, instead of busting eight hours to San Jose, like, Southwest, $47 ticket, like, so Dally went to Bob, he's like, Bob's like, no way, these guys, they gotta be riding the bus, they gotta be riding the bus for eight hours, I'm like, come on, Bob, you old crusty, like, <laughs> yeah, old school, yeah, old school, yeah, old school man. that's yeah. funny, even you here, and you don't jump on a Southwest bird, I've never heard that out of your mouth. Eight hours on a fucking iron lung, man, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, I would have done it for sure. Uh, Stoli, you brought up the South Bay there, fella. Uh, how's the house doing? How's the tub? Uh, I used to love coming up there only a couple times a summer, but just you welcome me right into the house there. How is it? How's the basement and everything doing there, fella? Everything's good. It's good with uh, the maintenance. One, the, once the eight, ten year mark happens, this uh, stuff going, this stuff starts breaking down. So it's uh, every, it seems like every day you know, you're going to do some maintenance on something. But no, it's, it's great down there. We have a good time. And Good setup. I got Drew. Drew is my neighbor now. Dowdy is my neighbor. Everybody's so close within two or three blocks. It's uh, it's amazing, actually, um, the living situation we have down here. But uh, like you guys know as well, you guys are down at the beach, just uh, what, about 45 minutes uh, south of us. So you yeah. guys know what it's like. But uh, no, it's it's good. It's fun. You know what? You can, the Kings have one of the best setups in the league. Like our boy, we, we had Killer on you know, a couple of weeks ago, and he's talking about you know being out here, and we talked about the travel, how there's a curfew at the airport here. But like in LA. You land at LAX. All you boys live in the South Bay. Your practice rink's right there. Like, besides going to crypto, I mean, your setup there is beyond sick. Yeah, and crypto really is only, it's it's about a 40, 45 minutes. Maybe the longest it's taken is just under an hour, but you go to a lot of these cities now and they're, you know, they're they're driving that. They're, they're driving around that. So uh, it's not bad. We carpool together. You listen to a couple tunes and, uh, you know, Nickelback and throw <laughs> that on. And then uh, we we'll like a couple, couple stories and you're there. So it's, it's not bad. Oh, Nickelback, Nickelback playing the Heritage Classic in a Did couple Did you weeks. see Mark Nook up there with Nickelback? We yeah. looked him up there. He's yeah. up there singing. Mark yeah. Nook, he loves it. He was loving it. A lot of boys in the league love Nickelback. I asked Richie about that with uh, Mark Nook there. And that it, it must be good buddies. They let him out stay up there for the full song. So, and, uh, yeah, no, obviously they're friends. But, yeah. You'll love uh, Heritage Classic will be fun. We're gonna, a bunch of us are going back for that. So that'll be a good time. Hey, Stoli, baby, you'll love this. So Richie hit me up. He's like, hey, can uh, Ch I know Chad, but fuck, you won't text me back, eh? Can you text him? I said, yeah, I'll text Chad. And Chad's been great with us. And I'm like, how are the seats? He's like, God, not great. Didn't have the old meet him after the concert thing. I said, fella, you don't play in the league anymore. You don't, you don't get you don't get that <laughs> yeah. anymore, man, all right? You yeah. get a ticket in the fucking yeah. 100 sections, and then you get the fuck out of there. Yeah, God. just enjoy it. Yeah, uh -huh. welcome to retirement, buddy. No one cares anymore, Richie. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you're going to start back to day one and scratch. Start back and scratch. Stoy, let's talk a little Kings, fella. Um, 
like we just said, you're doing a lot of good stuff for the organization on the ice, off the ice. I love what you do on TV. Uh, I want to talk about the Melbourne trip. How was it for the boys? I love Australia. I went down there with Loops to Sydney, never made it over to Melbourne. But from what you heard from the boys, uh, good team building, good good fans down there. It looked great on the social stuff I saw. Yeah. Yeah, all, all positive from what I've heard. All the guys had a great time. They, uh, you know, they only, they only played the two preseason games, and a lot of those guys only played the one. So they had some, they had some free time to, to roam around. And, um, and it's a city. It's a big city. I, I think some of them maybe expected to see more kangaroos jumping around, hopping around town. But, uh, yeah, no, it was a really, really nice, really, really nice city. Um, they had some good dinners. The food was good. The, the people were really, really nice. And uh, they played a couple of rounds of golf. They, they played a couple of really nice golf courses over there. So that was a plus. And, uh, yeah, no, the, the fans, they said, were, were really good too. Both games sold out, packed. Um, a lot of different types of fans of different teams, not just uh, Coyotes and Kings. It was uh, fans of various teams, a lot of different jerseys in the crowd. And, um, yeah, it was. I think it was a win for the NHL. It sounded like it went uh, went over really, really well. I saw a social clip. You're a big tennis guy. Yeah. I, I actually like watching tennis. I uh, doubt he got just worked by some tennis player down there. Who, I don't know who the hell, but Dewey was. Yeah. Dewey was battling. Then the guy. How, asked, was, how was his game? Did look good. A little rusty. Ooh. And and Dewey was throwing f bombs left, right, and center. And the guy <laughs> asked him. He's like, hey, do you guys get? Uh, I don't forget the word he used, but Dewey's like, yeah, you get a ten minute misconduct and you go in the box. I've had lots of those in my career. The tennis guy's like, yeah, I can understand why. Dewey was just jumping. <laughs> uh, Dewey loves his tennis. He's, he's pretty good, I think, but maybe he's a little rusty. I forget the guy's name he played, but I'm not even going to try to yeah, I was, say it was, his name. But uh, yeah. How was that, how's that team building on the way down on a, on a bird like that for 20 hours? How, how's that? And how was, uh, the, how was that bird? Uh, I heard it was good. I yeah. heard it was big. Uh, the boys, they all had to lay down, so they uh, they got some good sleep, I, I would think. But yeah, 17, 18 hours there, and then uh, a little bit shorter on the way back. So that's kind of what they were dealing with. But no, it was it was long, they said. But, you know, have, uh, have a meal, a couple of glasses of wine, and then shut her down for six or seven hours. Hopefully, watch a couple of movies, and you're there. Were you, Scully, were you on that trip where, where the Kings and Canucks went over to China, Shanghai? Were you there? No, you weren't. Uh, no, I wasn't. No, no, I was I'm on that about. for we the went over. You were there. I was on that for the Canucks and we took uh LA took like a Delta flight and we took this like chartered called crystal air. It's actually what those live tour guys took the one time where you see the poker tables and everything. Yeah. And it was just, a, oh, oh. it was just a rodeo on this, on this <laughs> bird. Uh, mind you, the Sedin brothers weren't having a rodeo, but, yeah. but the referees Very who were on there. The referees were there. There was a bunch of NHL staff and then like the players, we, you know, the lay down beds, but we had like choices of whiskey japanese whiskey wine whatever you want a little pinot a little up, cap up dogs on a pto mind you i'm on the like, pto i'm like hey, keep this test? between the reins here yeah, like, yeah, kind of a test? Test, yeah. Oh, God. we're in oh, uncharted God. waters God. though so. yeah stole I, I didn't hear about any of that i want to ask you from a guy who's a player development now i don't know what guys went to melbourne I assume a lot of the veterans but when you go to a training camp and, and you know like up you did and they take half their team to melbourne and the other guys stay back like how is that from a from a management perspective? Does it throw a kink in training camp? Does it make some guys feel like, do I have a chance to make this team? Like, what's your feel for that? How it went down? Well, yeah, from our side of it, uh, it was different. It, it felt weird for sure. It was, it was pretty quiet here. I mean, you have half the guys, and it was it was mainly the you know the veteran guys that played over there um, and went there. So here was a lot of the minor league players, some of the yeah the free agents that were coming to camp. Um, so I, you know maybe they. Did feel a little left out. I think I maybe would a little bit, but at the same time, you got you know the Ontario Rain coaching staff was here, Mark Will Sturm and his staff, and then Todd McClellan, and they talk every day. So the communication is is there. So if you're if you're over here and you're you're pouting your what was me type of thing, that's uh, that's the wrong approach for sure. So just uh, you know, tell you what, I'll play hard, put in a good uh, good showing for the coaches here. They talk, they communicate every day. Like I said, it's um, so. Don't uh, don't be that guy because once the Kings come back, there's still five or so exhibition games that uh, you can hopefully get in and, and and play well and still make the team. So, yeah, I see what you're saying, and maybe some guys felt that way, but uh, it was a little bit of a different feel, a little quieter around here, and not seeing the the big boys, um, you know, for sure was different. I would have been, I probably would have been pouting a bit. I'm not gonna lie, I would have been pouting, and I would have been like, "Hey, up dog, coaches aren't here. Let's go, <laughs> Hollywood. There's no, there's no way they're gonna find out what we're doing in Australia. Let's go, <laughs> let's go." Stoli, you talk about coaches. Well, what's now that you're on this side, and we might have talked about this before, but what what are you m- most impressed with, with how like coaches, you know, handle their their day to day and how much time they put in, and and you know, you, you say Sturmy and 
and Todd McClellan talk every day, but just behind the scenes on, on your end, what are you most impressed with how these coaches like approach the game, put in their time, video, all this stuff, but mm-hmm. what is it that you're like, well, yeah. boys, you guys are just, you guys go full on here. Yeah, they don't miss much at all. You know, they but they only have so much time too, right? And they got to take care of the, the team, you know, 24 guys, 25 guys, and, and you, you only got time for so much. And, you know, the, the practices during the season, it's it's go, go, you're playing three to four days a week, and then there's travel mixed in there. So they don't, you know, you got to gauge each guy's energy level too, and they're not practicing a ton during the season. So you got to take advantage of the practice days you get. So I think that's the, that's a big thing that I noticed with, with Todd and Marco, they do a really good job of reading when the guys need, need a day when they, when they need a really, really good hard practice, maybe, um, you know, to work on things that they're struggling, uh, during the course of a game or, or parts of the season that they need to work on and then work on it. But then also the assistant coaches or the player development staff, like you got to take uh, as individually and work with, and you know those guys on day five six in the morning every day so the, the hours that he puts in are, are incredible and um how detailed they are and how prepared they are is is amazing so um and i'm sure most most coaches are like tied in the nhl they, they're there for a reason so um but but here it's uh yeah very impressed on how how much they put into to their job how much they know how detailed they are and uh you know, it's no question why they're good coaches. It's it's easy yeah. to see how it's easy to go gray when you become a coach. Huh? No shit. Yeah. I mean, fuck. Yeah. No if sleep. I had to, if I had to watch your shifts up. No sleep. Day, watch it up, dog, and O'Brien turn the puck. I mean, over. How many times you get turn that puck yeah. over there, bud? I'm like, come on. Right, look at that. You're on your backhand. There. What are you doing there? Get the fucking thing out. <laughs> I mean, it's it's hard work. I, it's only for the certain few, right? Like. Not everyone can just jump into coaching and be a good coach. Not everyone can just sit in the air conditioned studio right, and just talk <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> hey, Stoli, babe. I mean, you you guys, obviously, you know, Feather and your guys' cap, Blakey and all the way down, all you guys. The rebuild has been, it's not even a rebuild anymore. You guys are contenders. You went from a rebuild to contenders real quickly. Big off season for you boys. You guys traded every guy I thought you were going to trade, but I thought you were going to get Austin Matthews. You, you guys went for Pierre Luc Dubois. Talk about uh, his impact already. You played the game the right way down the middle. You look at your centers now. I mean, there's not a team in the league with deeper centers. How has he been uh, as advertised a little bit? Yeah, I think so for sure. He's uh, he's bigger than I thought. I knew he was big, but he's he's six three six four. And uh, the other night, he just he, he looks like he's very effortless out there. It doesn't look like he's exerting too much energy, but he's flying up the ice and he ended up getting a breakaway and he didn't even look like he had two or three strides behind him. So, um, you know, he's, he's strong on the puck. We got a big team now and, and he just adds to that. Um, like you said, down the middle, one, two, three, and, you know, even our, our so-called fourth line, like everybody, we're going to be very, very hard to play against. And, uh, that top nine, you can throw those guys out there and they they can, you know, they can produce uh, over the course of a, of a season. So, um, look at the Stanley Cup champions over the years. You know, you don't, you can't just win on two lines, right? You, you need that third line producing and contributing, and the fourth line, you, you know, your energy and your penalty killers and your, you know, pests out there. You do your thing, but um, top nine is huge, and our top four defensemen back there are solid defensively, two hundred foot guys. So, um, but yeah, back to Dubois. He just he adds so much to our team because of the you know the strength down the middle, but. Um, power play guy we have two pretty really good units now uh, if you throw you know you got Fiala, Kopitar, Doughty, Kempe and then you got like guys like Arvidsson, Dano, uh Dubois haven't even mentioned him there so yeah pretty good uh pretty good lineup uh, top to bottom. it's a great lineup yeah still I gotta ask like Philip Dano, I don't know him personally right he was a big part of your team the last couple of years you know he bumped down to the third line center I don't know. We've all been there, right? You 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 want to play? You want to be out there? Is That's there a any, perfect is, spot for him? Is yeah okay? Is there, I think so. Is there any Shut concern up. about? Is he going to accept that role, or, or, or am I looking too much into it, Stoli? I don't know. Yeah, no, he's fine. He's yeah. totally fine. They, those guys, uh, you know, those guys are still going to play seventeen to eighteen, you know, twenty minutes a night, maybe. Um, you know, penalty kill. He's still going to he's penalty kill power play. Um, big important minutes uh, trusted by the coaching staff. So, yeah, uh, no. But uh, like I said, you top nine. You need those guys to, uh, to contribute and be there for you. Um, but no, he's, uh, he's, he's solid as they come. He's, uh, plays on both sides of the park and, um, he's, he's a good teammate from what I hear. Like what, what an intangible for a third line guy to not be like a guy looking for cookies, a guy that wants to just 
take. The, like, I'd like to cross check that guy. I know, <laughs> but, like, but and that's why he's so good. That's no, that's know, the perfect I, third yeah. line rule. I take a stupid pound. That's, that's, that's sure. what. Uh, <laughs> well, that's what you say too. Like guys, like, well, what kind of players do you? Well, on a championship team, you'd be a third line center, a hundred percent. Well, hopefully, yeah. we're a championship team. So. You know, yeah, that, yeah. That way. They said O'Brien on championship team would be a seventh D. Hey, <laughs> good guy. Just like stay warm, Holmes. And Stoli, I got to ask you too. Like I, I love the Kings. I'm, I'm pulling for them. But when I when I step back and I look at it from my perspective, 97 up there in Edmonton and 29. The last two years that you just guys haven't been able to, to slow them down. And do you have enough firepower to keep up with them, or are you just going to say, listen, we got three big centers. Eventually, we're going to find a way to grind you down and play our game. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I know it's, it's a tough Edmonton question. <laughs> yeah, it's Edmonton in Vegas, but yeah, so let's start with Edmonton because it's been the last two years. But um, you're not going to stop them. I mean, yeah. Nobody has in their whole career. So you, you try to slow them down, but you, by slowing them down, they still get a point and a half a game in the playoffs. So yeah, it is what it is. You just got to, you know, we, we had them on the ropes. We had them 2-1 in the series and we had them 3-0 at home. So um, those are, that's a game you can't lose. And then you're up 3-1, but it didn't happen, but it's uh, it's just taking advantage of your opportunities. And yeah, three three tough centers, three tough lines. Hopefully that helps against them. And, uh, you know, top, like I said, our top four D, you know, you got Gavrikov and Matty Roy, Drew Doughty and Mikey Anderson. Like between those four, are like that's pretty good. Four good defensive minded guys that are tough to play against, good reach, good stick. Um, you know, we'll, we'll battle against those guys. So yeah, we're, we're set up to, to beat those guys. We're set up to beat Vegas, but. You know, the game is played obviously on the ice. So you, uh, but yeah, you just hopefully third time the charm. We play it, we beat them, and we move on. <laughs> Stoli, um, the ceiling for a healthy Fiala. What do you What do you think this this kid? Like, I, he he's probably your most dynamic. I'm looking points. at your line, ninety points, forty goals. Like he's he's a dynamic well, he player to me. To, he's he's as quick. He loves to dish. Okay. Yeah. No, sorry. Go ahead. Up no, I just I I look at at this lineup, and w- if he's healthy, I mean that could have been the difference in just like him not with a nagging injury towards the last little bit of last year, coming back not full speed. But I I just look at him being that that guy that can make those score those big goals in those key moments in those big games, right? Yeah. When you're looking for one. Yeah. Yeah. No. For sure. I. Uh... He's so dynamic. I, it's, it's crazy how he moves with the puck, and uh, he wants that puck. So between him and Dubois, they actually the other night uh, and they threw Kaliev on there um, for that line that they had great chemistry, uh, especially him and Dubois. So that was nice to see. They just uh, snap it back and forth, a lot of give and goes. Um, but Fiala, he competes. He competes out there, and he's he's hard to play against. So I, I think his ceiling is probably, in my opinion, a ninety point guy. A little over a point a game, and uh, like I said, he's more of a passer than a shooter. But um, you know, if he gets thirty goals, thirty sixty, that's that, that'd be yeah. pretty darn good. <laughs> yeah, not bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you take that, eh, Stoli? Maybe I'll keep the lights on. I'll keep uh, the lights on the uh, South uh, Bay. Hey. Hopefully, your contract's up, <laughs> Stoli. I want to uh, just tag my question about scoring. Uh, Kempe, a guy who, you know, from day one I played against him in Ontario. Him and Dry Dry uh, I was like, you boys are in the wrong league. He's developed great. Have what you've seen in training camp thus far? It, can he take a next step? I know he was an All Star last year, but it, like, is there even more of this guy's game because Stoli, babe, he, he's nasty. He's released the way he plays. Good like, hair. Yeah, he could maybe even take the next yeah. step. Yeah, I think so. Maybe like you know, adding adding Dubois, they adding more offensive players. Like he, he's he's going to play with Kopi, right? That's 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 where he's going to be. And um, you know, if the power plays a little bit better, maybe he gets some more there. But uh, yeah, 40, 41, I think he ended up with. Like, can he get to fifty? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah, uh, he yeah, is he's so good. good. He's so good. You're right. He is a really, really good player. Maybe you guys don't really understand it too much, or don't see him that much. Us being out west here, but uh, this guy, yeah, you watch him in practice. He's like Pavel Bure in there. He just yeah. flies up and down the wing. Uh, I, I don't see why you know, if guys have some good years around him, why he can't get fifty. That's kind of where I was going. If he if he can get to that level, and I, you're never going to slow down McDavid and, and Dreisaitl, but if Kempe can turn himself yeah. into a 45, 50 guy, it's like, all right, here we go, boys. Now yeah. we're humming. Uh, let's yeah. talk about the other end of the spectrum. We love glue guys here at Missing Curfew. Uh, you, you brought back a glue guy, Trevor Lewis. Lou Ball's out there. <laughs> hey, uh, He's out there mucking it. I watched him play. How good is it to have him back? And guy's just a good pro. 
Yeah, it's, it's awesome to have him back. We, you know, a lot of us still keep in touch and we had the reunion uh, last summer. So he came back for that. Uh, yeah, Louis, 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 he's going to play the same way every night. He's going to be great in the dressing room. Great for the young guys. Just, uh, you know, good role model for a lot of these guys because he's been through so much and, and still going, right? He didn't have, he didn't have a contract a couple of years ago. And uh, much like, yeah, you do, up. You guys go into camp, you earn a, earn a, a roster spot earn a contract and you play a couple more years and that's exactly what louis is doing here so um you know but he's played like, the last two years i think last year he played 80 or 81 games so he's 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 not getting scratched he's you know he's out there for a reason and he's gonna be a good penalty killer and um a good guy in this team but it's great to see him back in the it's a little weird seeing him in a jersey that's uh 61 yeah. on the back and not on a 22 but saw that uh kevin fiala tough tough guy to go after to get your number back yeah, and you can't just outbid him. Maybe like, hey, Fal, you know, he's making yeah, too much yeah. cheddar. You're like, sorry, Lou. Uh, you know, like, I'm going to wear 22. I tried to do that to Shen. It didn't happen. <laughs> um, yeah, 36. Like, how old is he? 36 years old. I don't care who you are. Yeah, if you're 36 yeah. years old right now playing the NHL, it's good on you. Yeah, he you're plays doing right something. Way. You found a way to do something right. You know, Kopitar's one thing. He's Kopi. Yeah. yeah. But a guy like Lewis Stoll, you're right, man. He played. He plays hard, plays the right way, and teammates respect it. But I don't know if people know too, like Louis off the ice uh, training wise, he's always been top three, top five, every training camp, you know, when I was here in LA, he's, he's always in great shape. So 36. Yeah. But you know, he's, he still gets around. Yeah. Up. He's got a higher bear chamber. If he needs to get in and tell Louis, he's got a chamber down here. If he wants to get in for a, you know, <laughs> sonic, cold plunge, you whatever you need, bro. You got to stay young. Yeah, this baby. guy's backyard. It's just a hangover cure back. <laughs> 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 oh, Jesus. Stole what else are you going to do? You touched on the back end. Um, listen, I think Jersey was, was, a, was a big loss for you guys. As much as when I watched the play, if I played against him, he drove me nuts. I, I love this compete level, but Gavrikov, Unbelievable pickup for you guys last year. I didn't know how good he was. You talk about a good stick. He's got one of the best in the league. How much better do you think he can be with a full training camp, a full season, and being an LA King from the start of, of opening night? Yeah, just just being around the guys. I think that trip to Australia probably helped a lot, right? Just uh, you know, being getting comfortable with everybody, um, not just players, but just the staff in general too. But uh, and when he came to the team last year after the trade deadline, like he was, he gets pretty comfortable pretty pretty fast, and that, that was a good thing. Yeah, it's just his uh, his personality, and uh, you know, he jumped right in, and he was he was joking around and you know, giving guys shots here and there. And he was, uh, he was a great teammate. You could tell right away talking with uh, you know, Kopi and Drew, they, they loved him right away. Um, so yeah, he's going to be huge for this team. And um, you talked about Jersey too, but you know, we got a couple, you know, Jordan Spence is great back there offensively, uh, Brad Clark coming in. So those guys are battling for, for a spot on the roster. will be great power play guys as well. So it was, it was tough to lose Durs, but you know, you, you lose Durs, but you got guys coming up that could, that could fill that role as well. But um, yeah. Yeah. I shouldn't probably talk about foot speed here, but I got what well, about Clark's foot speed? I mean, I watched him play Royal Juniors. He's fuck, he slows her down. But like, is, is foot speed something he's working on? Is he getting better? How how's his boots looking out there? Yeah, he can always get better skating wise, but it's his it's his head. He, he has yeah. hockey sense, the smarts. Uh, he knows when he can go, when not to, and uh, pick his spots. But yeah, it's you know, some guys don't look pretty out there, but they get it done, right? And um, he's so good with the puck. Uh, he just he makes plays out of nothing and. Um, he's going to be a, a very, very good player for a long time. He's, the numbers he went back to, and I know it's junior hockey, but you know uh, the numbers he put up last year yeah. after uh, going back from the World Juniors where it was stupid. So, um, but no, he's going to be a good pro, good player. Last one for me, Stoli, babe. I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. Hey, eh? you're Stanley Cup champ, but what are the expectations for the LA Kings this year? Right, all the good stuff we've just talked about. They ran into McJesus the last two years within the organization or in, within that dressing room. What are the expectations this year for the Kings? Well, I think to like I said earlier, you got to get by Edmonton in Vegas. You know, maybe there's a surprise here or there, but I I don't think there there will be. I think you still got to get through those those two teams, and that's that's the goal. And once you do that, I don't see like we've talked about with our lineup, uh, top to bottom, pretty darn good. And uh, goaltending tandem with, with Talbot and Cop Copley, they're going to figure that out. Um, you know, they're going to battle each other for for that spot for playing time, and and that'll be a good thing too. I think so. Yeah, the sky's the limit, I think, for uh, for this team. So, you know, worry about getting by Edmonton and Vegas. And then, uh, what up, what up, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> move on from there. Yeah, I know. The league's better when the Kings are good. Yeah. Uh, crypto, it's still staples to me, but when crypto's rocking, it's, it's a good barn. And listen, 
we got a missing curfew sprinter van now that we picked up. So we're going to be coming up to some Kings games, shooting some content, Stoli Babe. So uh, we'll let you know when the boys pull up. <laughs> he's, not, he's not lying. We'll here. let we're you not, know when we pull up. Oh, oh, I, I, hey, yeah, Stoli, we, we might need a park. It's a write off. We huh? might need a parking spot, Stoli. You know, any parking spots there? You can maybe slip the wave yeah. us in. Wave us in. Hey, come on in, boys. Right. Come on in. I could get you a placard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stoli, hey, you're the man, buddy. You've been so good to us here. We love you. Uh, hopefully see you soon. I know you're busy, but uh, congrats on the Mac attack. Keep going, buddy. Uh, and we appreciate everything you do for Mr. Curfew. Fala.